and you know we're outside in the backyard outdoors taking shots you get the same shots on that that you do with this yeah you heard that We're here at one of our favorite spots, so we like to come and shoot. It's quiet, there's an old train behind us, some interesting stuff to shoot. And what are we talking about today? Uh, well, cameras. Uh, I took out uh, the M50. I went out for Father's Day to my family's house over the last weekend, and I didn't want to bring my big camera, but I wanted to get some shots. So I took the M50 with me. We were gonna be outdoors, it was a beautiful day, and it worked fantastically. I mean, for what I was shooting, just getting shots of the family, it focuses fast, it takes pictures, the, the quality are, are really nice. I'm able to shoot with this 22 millimeter lens wide open at 2.0 and get some nice portrait type stuff. It's just a really nice camera to use. And I just, I didn't want to bring my big, you know, Canon R with the big lens on it. So having something like that, it's just in situations like that is great. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been uh, really enjoying using this over the last two years. And uh, there are many times I'll grab this instead of my Nikon. So today we thought what would be interesting is this little pancake lens that's on here is basically a 35 millimeter equivalent. And what do you have there? I've got the RF 15 to 35 zoom uh, on the Canon R, which is just a fantastic lens. I love it. But I'm going to set this to 35 millimeters, giving us basically the same focal length as the M50 with the 22 millimeter lens. And we'll take some shots and compare, see what they look like. Right, we'll shoot it. So this is an F2 lens. This is an F2.8 lens. Yep. So we'll set this to F2.8. Um, Eric's gonna do all the shooting so he can frame everything up and you know maybe uh, he'll take some pictures of me or whatever's around here. There's some American flags over there. Um, try to get some shallow depth of field shots and we'll compare and see, you know, can a $500 camera and uh, I don't know, thousands, thousands of something dollars you how, know, much, how much is the compare, compare really? You know, how much are you giving up by using a cheap or smaller camera compared to this? I don't know that much. Yeah. Well, you know, this is really controlled. I mean, if you want, if you, you know, if you were really going to start digging, like if this lens, you can go to 15 millimeters, it's very versatile. Right. The images are probably a little sharper. I guess we're going to see though. Maybe yeah. they're not. Yeah, we'll take a look. In ideal conditions, it's, it's a nice day out today. It's a little bit, getting a little bit late. So the sun's down. So there's just a nice lighting out right now. In nice conditions like this, Basically, you're getting the same images. Yeah, all right. So uh, we're gonna throw this camera on the, uh, we're gonna hold it and uh, Eric's gonna shoot around and we'll see how it goes. Okay, using my trusty switch pod and uh, we'll do this vlogging style. All right, so let's uh, see what Eric's got going on. Flowers, perfect. A perfect test subject. Yes, flowers. All right, so I'm set at f2.8. And uh, like we said, this 22 millimeter lens is like a 35 millimeter equivalent. So I'll get the shot with this. And focusing is so nice and easy with this lens, with this camera. There, that'll do. All right, so now I gotta get the framing the same. So I'll set this here. And I'll try to take the same shot. Now with that, with the Canon R, are you finding yourself using the touch screen in the back to fire the shutter or do you still go with the traditional shutter? No, I still use the traditional shutter. Very, very more often though, I'm composing my images like with, this. With the screen right? and not, not, using... not looking through it. Even though the electronic viewfinder is really nice to use, I find, it's just so easy to be able to compose it just holding it up like this. Yeah. So now we gotta get the same shot or something close to it. Now with the touch screen, I have the center point focus here on the Canon R and if I want to focus down here on the flower I just touch right there and now that's where my focus point is all my settings are the same that's close enough I get two of basically the same image and then we'll check those out in the computer later yeah all right so let's do some more of that I find that when I'm shooting with my DSLR I tend to use the the shutter release and I compose through the, you know, the eye, you right. know, the optical viewfinder. But when I'm using the M50, I never use the viewfinder in it. I always use the screen on the back. It's very simple to use. The touch screen is great. It's just, uh, yeah. it's, it's the, very strange. The viewfinder is a lot smaller on the M50. Looking through it, it doesn't look as... Yeah, it's a little bit strange. It's not, right, it's not as bright, it's not as big. Yeah. Okay, so we're here. We got some American flags over here. Let's do this. Here's where I'll employ my flippy screen. So I can compose down a little bit further. These screens are invaluable. I love how they flip and move. That's one of the things about my Nikon that I really do like. I 
just wish it swung out to the side. Flip the screen. So with the new uh, R5, is that what it's called? The R5, yeah. Maybe I'll buy that one from you. This one here? Yeah, maybe I'll go all cannon. <laughs> That's a bold move. <laughs> it is a bold move. But you're, you're running through gear so fast. I know. This has been a, a transitional year for me. Yes, it has. Right, these are going to be slightly different just because of the wind blowing. But we'll get the idea. You want to take some pictures of me? Sure. All right, so now you're going to get an idea of what it looks like to be the subject of a photographer. All right, so here is a portrait. That's very nice. And the same shot with the R5, with the R. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I said the same shot with the R5. That's a Freudian slip. Mm -hmm. What about maybe doing like a wide landscape shot? Yeah, yeah. All right, we got these railroad ties here. Yeah. You, if, from this angle, you'd actually think there's a railroad here. Yeah. Like you wouldn't realize that it just stops. I've got the ISO set to auto ISO. This way I'm getting a fast enough shutter speed without having to think about it. Just like that. I don't know where you are in the country right now, but today it was 90 degrees. Actually, summer has arrived here in New York. The uh, virus is kind of at bay right now here. Yeah, New York was bad for a long time. Yeah. It's actually been pretty good. Things are kind of, I think we're in phase Three, three just here. started today. On Go Long back Island. into restaurants. Yeah, you know things are starting indoor, to open a little bit. Indoor restaurants. I'll uh, be very nice. It, it was actually nice eating outdoors for a couple yeah. of weeks. It was kind of nice. I have to say, I'm sad. I just canceled my Disney trip. It just seems uh, too restrictive and like uh, I don't know, just not a good time to travel down to Florida. I don't know. It was hot today, wearing a mask. I don't know. Just, it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be weird for weird for a while there. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Definitely a different way of vacationing, uh, but I'll be out there in the RV. So if you're new to the channel, by the way, uh, we have a ton of videos on all sorts of things, photography. You know, I've been, uh, I have an RV that I've been using for the last two summers and uh, it's been a great way to travel and doing some photography with it. So uh, that's the way I'm going to be spending my summer. Where, what are you doing? You are I, going. I'm actually going to be down in Florida a couple of times over the summer. My daughter's going to college in Orlando starting in August. Yep. So we're kind of getting her oriented, getting her down there. We have to go down for some things in July and then move, moving her in in August. So it's kind of daunting. Right now there's a quarantine going from New York to Florida. Yeah. So we don't know if that's still going to be in effect when we go. And now there's going to be a quarantine coming back from Florida to New York again. So yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's hard to move around right now. Definitely. What, you, what was that shot? Uh, that was this railroad crossing sign here. Apparently this is the Wanto train station from 1885. Just a little bit of history here. So when we do stuff like this, it's, you know, to kind of demonstrate things to you, but it's also really to answer questions for ourselves sometimes, which is like, you know, how good is this M50, which we've been using for a year and a half now, compared to, you know, brand new camera like the Canon R, full frame pro level camera like this. Yeah, I mean, I know that when push comes to shove and I need to get a really good picture, I'm going with my DSLR, like I, I know, there are limitations with this, especially if there's right. low light situations and things like that. So, you know, there is a difference. I mean, there, no matter how these pictures come out, when push comes to shove and like you're, you know, you're working or something, right. you, you, the, the cameras do make a difference. The, just the ergonomics of them, the button placement, right. all that kind of stuff makes it a little bit easier. But for its price and, uh, you know, a small little mirrorless like that, you know, whatever brand you're gonna get, uh, the Sony, the, the Nikon, Z50, uh, whatever it is, they're, they're great little cameras to have because that you can throw in your pocket, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so, right in my pocket. It's so small. All right, so Eric is actually gonna finish the second half of this video. He's gonna edit um, the images that he just took yep. and then he'll let you know what he thinks about the, you know, if, uh, if there's any difference or, or whatnot. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. look at them side by side and see what they look like. Okay, so uh, you'll see Eric in a second and I will see you in the next video. Don't go away. Okay, so let's look at these shots side by side. On the left, you have the Canon M50. On the right, you have the Canon R. 
and they look really similar. And if we dive in and look at these at 100%, you're going to see the focus is on these back pedals here. They basically look exactly the same. Color-wise, it's the same. Contrast is basically the same. Sharpness, you're looking at very similar images. Now, you'll notice one thing is the depth of field on the M50 on the left uh, is a little bit deeper. The depth of field on the Canon R on the right is shallower. It's a little bit softer in the background. And that's really just because of the depth of field produced by the lenses. The M50 is using a 22 millimeter lens, which is a wider focal length and you're going to naturally get a deeper depth of field with that even though you're shooting that at f 2.8 and you're shooting the canon r at f 2.8 that's using a 35 millimeter so once you settle in the crop factor the field of view and the framing is the same on both of these but the depth of field is going to be a little bit deeper and not quite as shallow on the m50 as you're going to get on the R. You're going to get that nicer background blur. Again, not a huge difference, but just a little bit of a difference that you'll see in these images. We can look at the colors produced by both of these cameras here, the M50 on the left, the R on the right, and it's basically, basically the same thing. Sharpness right in the middle, the focus is on the center flag here. Both very sharp, very nice look to them, very nice colors, very, very similar images here. These portrait shots are built, again, very nice. You're getting pretty much the exact same image out of both. You'll notice again the background on the R on the right is a little bit blurrier, uh, which is you're getting that because of the uh, shallower depth of field, even though the shot at the same aperture, a little bit more blurred on the background with the Canon R, but basically the same thing. You're, very, you're getting very little difference between the two. Nice, sharp portrait shots of Bill here. Again, not much difference between these two. The shots with these railroad ties here, very, very similar. I messed up the focusing point on each of these. You can see if I drill in a little bit, you can see on the M50, I focused on this tie here and on the R on the right, I focused on this one before it here. Uh, so the overall image is a little bit different on the two, but you can see basically as far as color contrast and things like that, you're getting the same shot. And on these railroad signs here, you're basically getting the same thing again. You zoom in a little bit closer. The color's off a little bit on each of these. I didn't correct it. Uh, but as far as the sharpness and the contrast, looks really nice on both of them. I was getting confused. I had to name the photos, the left one on the left, one on the right. I had to name them Canon M50 and Canon R on all these, just so I could tell the difference between the two, because I was getting confused. So the bottom line is with shots like these, just casual vacation photos and people shots, in normal shooting conditions. A camera like the M50 is more than enough. You're gonna get really high quality stuff. You're gonna love using it. The ease of use of these things, the M50 is really nice. Uh, it's very intuitive as far as helping guide you uh, through the menu system and actually getting the right settings for your camera. Uh, it's a really wonderful camera. So if you have an SLR now, maybe an older entry level SLR, and you wanna get into mirrorless, you don't really need to spend the money to get something bigger like the R or the RP. The M50 is really great for that. And if you're just getting started in photography, I would definitely recommend getting into mirrorless. And a camera like the M50 is a really good place to start. If you outgrow it, if there's more that you want to do with it, you're pushing the limitations of the camera itself and there's more that you want to do with it, then at that point you can expand into something else. But just to start out, to start building up a kit and a camera bag and getting used to how the thing works, M50 is great for that. I'm going to put up links here to playlists that we did, one for the Canon M50 and one for the Canon R series. So if you're looking into either of those cameras and want to learn more about them, check out those playlists. We got a bunch of good videos in there you can see. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.